In this session, we will be reviewing vulnerability assessments or security surveys. A risk and vulnerability assessment, um, also known as a security survey, is a tool that can be used to evaluate a facility to determine where risks are present that could cause security issues. In this example uh, that you see on the screen, we'll be walking through a facility that is basically designed as a distribution center. And we'll be talking about some of the issues that could come into play. Fundamentally, the distribution center has an employee entrance where you see cars parked. In this type of a area of your facility, the employees will come in the main entrance that you see in the very bottom of the screen. They'll pull into the parking spot, leave their vehicle, and enter through the main door. And across the front of the building, you also see windows that could possibly be an access control issue. On the side of the building, on the side of the building, you see tractors and trailers. Uh, this is an area where a lot of the vehicle traffic will occur in the standard production of the facility where product is delivered, received, and then possibly later loaded and shipped. As we go around the back of the facility, we see three exit doors. And these doors are typical emergency exits. Usually they're not used for standard coming and going in the facility, with the exception of possibly maintenance, uh, because some of these rear entries and exits, maintenance may use those to uh, enter and exit the facility to perform different work around the, the property. And we have the same thing on this side of the facility, where there are standard pedestrian doors. Now that we've taken a general view of the facility, let's talk about risk and vulnerability assessments or security surveys. Fundamentally, we'll approach these from two perspectives. One will be exterior security options, and the second will be interior security options. So basically, we're going to start from the outside and, and work our way in. As you examine the facility, one of the macro level considerations is facility design. How is the property set up? How is the uh, fencing laid out? What are the borders of the property? And here we're dealing with a very fundamental uh, rectangle or a square. So for the purpose of our discussion, this, this will be a, a very simple way to approach the issue. Facility design can be looked at uh, from the very outside perspective of fencing and, green, and uh, landscaping. In this diagram, what we see are trees, we see bushes, and we see a gray fence that encircles the facility. Where these can become issues is, number one, fencing allows us to prevent unwanted people from entering the property. Often you'll see fences that uh, could be six feet tall, uh, possibly a couple of strands of barbed wire on the top to prevent people from entering. Though landscaping is an attractive visual component of a lot of facilities, one of the issues that we can see here is that as you rotate around the facility, landscaping can actually prevent outsiders from viewing the facility. This can be a potential security issue because if your facility is not occupied 24 hours a day and at nighttime either there's no one on property or, or maybe a security officer, people passing by your facility are actually a help to your security process because if they can see your facility uh, or even if there's a house next door to the facility, neighbors can see behavior or activity that's out of the normal. And if they see that uh, there's a truck parked in the, on the property and headlights are moving and it's 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night and they know that the facility is closed, then that could be a, a potential signal to them that they need to call the police and, and assist you in your security efforts. But if landscaping is in place that prevents the view from the street, then that could possibly create issues for you. The fence that surrounds the facility is also a barrier. It prevents people from coming in the facility. And if we rotate around to look at the rear of the facility, we also see a second barrier, uh, or a third barrier rather, in the form of the truck gate. The truck gate is uh, another barrier that can be used where uh, 
tractor trailer traffic that's used to pick up and deliver product is used to enter and exit the facility. There also a security officer may be staffed or it could be a, a member of the organization who's there to check traffic that's coming and going to make sure that only approved deliveries are being made and that uh, product that's leaving the facility is checked to ensure that it's accurate for what's being shipped. A third exterior security issue could be security glass glazing. And if you look at the security gate, each of these gates will typically have windows that can be used to view outside so that the security officer can sit inside and be able to see the perimeter as well as their main function of, of monitoring traffic that's coming and going. Intrusion detection is a issue also inside the facility. Uh, we talked about it outside the facility, but if you look inside the facility, the center room there that's adjacent to the warehouse could possibly be an IT area where a lot of the computer networks or servers, uh, even safes or vaults could be stored. Interior rooms can be monitored because in the event of uh, a uh, security issue with IT, um, because these rooms are typically located in the center facility where you can see a, a server there and a table in the room toward the center of the building, uh, access control and intrusion detection need to be considered there as well. Uh, any of these situations provide an opportunity for employees to access critical information or equipment that can be stolen within the facility. So in those cases, prox card IDs or locks may be used to control entry and access uh, to those areas of the facility to ensure that only authorized people are allowed in those areas. Alarm systems as well are an issue with uh, the interior component of your vulnerability assessment. Any of these doors that are used to access office areas such as the IT room, uh, you can see the door there that lets you into that part of the facility, uh, office doors that may need to be alarmed, any of those areas can be uh, equipped with door contacts and uh, prox card locks any of which can provide a good degree of security for your facility. One of the issues with prox card locks, uh, similar to the exterior doors, is life safety. It's important to ensure that whenever those are utilized, that if there is an incident such as a power outage, that those locks fail in an open position. That way, if there's anyone inside those rooms, they can exit the room uh, without the door being locked. Alarm systems throughout the facility can be utilized to identify doors opening, uh, motion detection in certain areas of the facility. If it's after hours uh, out in the warehouse, motion detectors can be used. And also, if you look at the, the dock area, um, the dock area can be used to uh, use photoelectric beams that can be used to shoot across large distances so that if someone were to penetrate a dock door, uh, stepping into the area would break the beam and activate an alarm. Again, communications is a key issue. Uh, ensuring that security officers and managers and uh, possibly employees are equipped with either cell phones or radios that can be used to clearly communicate issues throughout the shift. Contraband detection is a growing concern because as we talked a second ago about workplace violence, as people enter the facility through the front door, ensuring that either metal detectors or some type of screening process is in place uh, to ensure that nothing is being brought onto the facility that could be used as a weapon, such as a gun or a knife. So with that, we can see how risk and vulnerability assessments can be easily conducted at a facility as simple as a warehouse or a distribution center. These principles can easily be applied to more complex facilities as well as facilities that have more detail in landscaping or how the, how the facility could possibly be designed.